What's up, Tesla family? It's Ray J back with another video. And in this one, I want to break down what's happening with Tesla spy in the overall markets. I'm going to talk about the Chinese sales that just came out involving Tesla, and you should be watching for in the markets we're seeing in video trying to squeeze. But just know that I am not a financial planner, so take nothing I say as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, please check out my Moomoo link. If you deposit $100, you're guaranteed five free stocks. If you deposit $1,000, you're guaranteed 15 in total. Not to mention 8.1% APY on uninvested cash. This new offer ends in just about 11 days, so check it out before they run out. Anyways, now let's talk about the market. So as far as Tesla goes, we've got this very, very nice accumulation like structure that has been developing. But the issue is we did see this little dip on Tesla early on. Uh, we got this dip as a result of our Chinese sales data. But since then, Tesla has been once again trying to recover because we're seeing NVIDIA getting bought back up and it's helping the market push. So let's talk about the Chinese sales, what happened with them. We're looking at the new registrations. Tesla's got about 17,100 vehicles about uh, or very, very close to that during the previous week. That's about a 1.2% decline relative to before. And year over year, that also shows that the overall uh, registrations increased by about 4.9%. So kind of flat overall, but we did see a slight decrease week over week, which is part of why it wasn't like that great and why Tesla dipped just a little bit. Not that big of a deal, though. It's just one week, guys. And uh, like we've said before, we're going to get very, very strong amounts of sales towards the end of the quarter. So once we get to December, I do expect the sales to start going up like crazy. For now, this is completely normal. Nothing too surprising as we're getting very, very close to the holiday season. I think Tesla's getting ready for those big increases. There's also this news right over here about how the Model 3 is getting shorter estimates uh, delivery dates, uh, at least in China. And that's very important because China's wait time for the re-engineered Model Y has been reduced. Uh, that is a big shift compared to before. So what they're basically saying is that the estimated delivery date for the new Model 3 RWD is going to be uh, uh, now listed at about one to three weeks. Uh, this also includes the long range dual motor all wheel drive and then the Model 3 performance. So a little bit of a shift compared to before. Previously, it was at about between two to four weeks. So this uh, just shifted today. And that's actually a pretty decent because this now gives them a lot more incentives to get more sales. I think that faster delivery days would be a lot better. Um, so that being said, guys, um, with these faster wait times, I think that that's going to be a good piece of news for them as they're developing these new models and a lot of new developments from there. Um, with that being said, there's not really much data coming out, but just know that we have NVIDIA's earnings for tomorrow. So NVIDIA is what's leading the market up. And now Tesla's trying to follow things very well. So Tesla's range bound. We do have a tendency of rejecting near this 350 area or a little bit under that. And we tend to get bought back up around 331 for the last two days. It's been going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So I think Tesla could attempt to push closer to... Uh, 348 later on, but but then I think we're just going to consolidate in this range as time goes on. So most likely Tesla is just going to remain range bound for now, not really doing a whole lot. Um, if we manage to break past the 350 area, there could be a much bigger breakout. Otherwise, we're just going to be range bound. As far as SPY goes, now I want to call out SPY. We got this big dip because of the Russia-Ukraine situation, but I said to watch and see 585. If we hold this, we will attempt to bounce. I was anticipating some downside. As you can see, we did see SPY dip a little bit. It actually touched the 583 area, but then we got bought back up from there. And with NVIDIA squeezing, we saw a lot of buyers step in and start to defend these markets. So now we're making a nice V-shaped recovery. So with that being said, I want to call this out on SPY. On the daily time frame, we have this very, very nice gap up here. If we manage to break this resistance at 589, we're going to be looking for this gap fill uh, to take us up to about 593. I think SPY will be approaching the 589, so we'll have to see if that breaks. So it's going to be a tough resistance. Uh, we'll see if we break that or not, but I do see some more upset potential in this chart for 589+. Plus. If that breaks, I think we fill this gap all the way back up here for a nice little rebound. So there's potential in SPY. We actually have a nice double bottom here. We'll have to see how it goes from there. For ES, it's the same thing. We were dipping a bit only to get bought back up. Um, we held our daily 20 EMA, so we're going to be looking for an attempt to get back up to about 59.40. So I see a little bit more upside potential in this, as long as we don't lose 59.11. We're looking pretty good. On the QQQ, so this dumped all the way down to about the 496s. Then it got bought back up. So now we're holding above 500.67. So as long as we hold above that, this is now favoring this imbalance. So we could be going up to about 503 or a little bit under that. 
If we lose 500 and flat, we turn back down. But I think this is favoring a push for 503 very soon. If that breaks, we have this big gap to fill. And just know it's very interesting how we're doing this right before NVIDIA's earnings. Now, will NVIDIA cause a rug pull to move back down to fill this gap? Or do we start pushing up to fill the upper gap? As of right now, we're favoring a push higher. And I think with NVIDIA's earnings coming out, that's going to be a big factor. NVIDIA is what's leading the QQQ and the other stocks up right now because we are seeing a lot of buyers defending it as we're getting a lot of hype with earnings. We'll have to see if we break past our gap resistance. So watch NVIDIA right here around this 144 area. If we manage to break that, I think we easily start pushing for the 147 area. So NVIDIA has some upside potential over the next two days, which could help the market push a little bit higher. But whether or not this last depends on their earnings, what we see from guidance. Um, Bitcoin is breaking these highs. We're going to be looking for a test of about just under 94,000. I think we could be pushing a little bit higher from here. So the market's back to bullish. Apple dipped a bit only to get bought back up. So we're still holding the support, which is what we talked about. Um, we're looking for it 230, and then this gap fill all the way up to about 230 is likely coming. And if that breaks, this imbalance could take us up to 232. Apple looks bullish on the daily nonetheless. It's doing a good job at holding up. We're also seeing Netflix squeezing after they made the big announcement that they're going to be streaming some NFL games in the future, not to mention one on um, uh, on Christmas Day. And then Beyonce is going to be doing a performance as well. So there's very, very big expectations for that. Um, and then on top of that, Wedbush did raise their price targets about 950. Uh, that's very bullish. So I think Netflix remains very strong from here. We're going to be looking for an 870 test very soon. The IWM ended up dumping all the way down to 226. But I said to watch that support to see if it holds. If we had lost that, we'd be looking for 223. But instead, we ended up getting bought back up. So now we're looking for an attempt to get back up to 230. Followed by 231.4. I see upset potential in the IWM for now. For coin. We dipped very close to what we were expecting, all the way down to about the 315 area, only to get bought back up. Amazon's attempting to rebound as long as we're above 203.76. I think we're favoring 205. This is a nice double bottom accumulation with the bullish divergence. I think we could be pushing for 205.5 as long as we hold above that support. Meta could be pushing for essentially 556. Now we held 550. So we did dip below it. We were talking about this might dip a little bit. Then we got bought back up afterwards, um, especially as NVIDIA is leading the way up. So the market made a big U turn. So we're going to be looking for essentially 556 very soon, at least for Meta. For Microsoft, I'm seeing the same thing. Uh, this might try to push back up for the 416 area, but it's very flat. Uh, it might be a small push with the wick forming there. Google could be now trying to rebound. We were talking about 174 to be tested. We came down to about 174.6. So it dipped and then it got bought back up. This imbalance will take us up to about 180. So I think as long as we're above 178, we favor 180 again. So a nice a nice uh, looking bounce in the markets is what's pending. The VIX was trying to break out to fill this gap, but then it got a huge rejection. So pretty crazy stuff. Um, we're going to be looking for 15.61 on the VIX. If we lose that... There's this gap down here to fill around the 14s, which could signify a lot more upside. The VIX pumped only to reject, and the market's trying to push. So we're doing a good job so far. NVIDIA's leading the way up, and just know that as far as Tesla goes, we just remain more range-bound. So um, I could see Tesla push for the higher 340s. 348 could be coming, but it's not going to be that huge of a move until we try to break the resistance from yesterday. Once we break that, we will turn a lot more bullish. Otherwise, Tesla is still technically range-bound. That being said, I thank you all so much for listening. I'll see you guys in a couple of hours for another update. Until then, have a great day and peace out.